director name? So we have started with acid, bases, and soils, right? So we have covered what are acids, what are the types of acids. Then we have discussed about the types of acids. We have seen the common okay, organic acids, their natural sources. Then we have what are mineral acids, what are okay, what are the examples? Bases also we have seen. Then we have seen indicators in the previous class. We were discussing about indicators. So there are two types of indicators. One is natural indicators and the other is synthetic indicators. So natural indicators, they are obtained from natural sources. So we have seen the examples also. The Christmas paper, then turmeric. Okay, then we have seen the red cabbage. And so this is the red cabbage. Okay, so these are the natural indicators. Then we have seen some common indicators. So these are the common indicators. So common indicators uh, like meth methyl orange. Okay. So methyl in, uh, orange indicator, it gives you red color in acidic solution and it gives you yellow color in basic solution. So this is the role of methyl, uh, methyl indicator. Okay. Then uh, phenolphthalein. So phenolphthalein is also an indicator which is colorless. Okay. And this indicator, okay, uh, so it is colorless in the acidic medium and it gives pink color in the basic medium. Yeah. All factory indicators you don't have. Then we have seen about universal indicator, right? Yes, so in universal indicator. So, you know, what do you mean by universal indicator? Universal indicator, it will show you a different range of pH, okay, from 1 to 14 of a given solution. So, a give a, a indicator what it will tell you indicator will tell you whether it is acidic or basic but it won't tell you the strength so the strength of the solution can be indicated by universal indicator okay so this universal indicator it is available in both the form in the form of strips as well as in the form of solutions okay so these are some of the indicators the combination uh, such as water propanol Okay, phenolphthalein, sodium salt, sodium hydroxide, methyl red, bromothymol blue, monosodium salt, and thymol blue, monosodium salt. So, these are some of the universal indicators. So, what are the role of the pH in everyday our life? Okay, so you know that. So, pH in our digestive system. So, dilute HCl. Okay, that is dilute uh, hydrochloric acid. It helps in digestion of food. So the food we eat, okay, so the hydrochloric acid which is produced in our body, so that will help us uh, to uh, digest, okay, the food which we are eating. So it helps us to digest it in our stomach. But when this acid which is produced, if it is in excess, okay, if the acid which is produced is in excess, then it will cause what? Then it will cause you indigestion, okay. Indigestion, how does indigestion is caused? Indigestion is caused when you have an increased amount of acid. Okay, in your stomach, when there is increased amount of acid produced, then it will cause you indigestion. So, how to uh, how to treat the indigestion? Okay, how to treat the acid tea? So, how to treat the acidity or how to try, uh, treat the indigestion? You have to take antacids. Okay, you have to take antacids like magnesium hydroxide. Okay, magnesium hydroxide, it is called as what? It is called as milk of magnesia. So, when you take, when the amount of acid in your stomach is increased, okay, it uh, instead of digestion, it is leading to indigestion. Means what? Your food is not getting di digested properly. Okay. So, when the amount of hydrochloric acid or the acid which is there in our stomach, it is more. So, that time you need to treat it. How you will treat it? You will treat it by using antacids. So, antacids like magnesium hydroxide that is called as milk of magnesia. Okay. And sodium hydrogen carbonate. 
and sodium hydrogen carbonate that is baking soda so these are the two uh, you can say examples of antacids which are used to neutralize your excess acid so when in your stomach when there is excess of acid present so to neutralize this these two can be used one is magnesium hydroxide which is called as milk of magnesia another is sodium hydrogen carbonate okay another is what sodium hydrogen carbon okay so these two are used to neutralize the excess of acid next is tooth decay so when the amount of acid okay present the body will be more that time it will lead to tooth decay also so tooth decay caused by acids so the bacteria which is present in our mouth what it will do it will convert the sugars into acid so if you eat more of sugars okay so the bacteria which is present in our mouth okay when you have too much of sugar okay sugar means what uh, when you have a sweet tooth means what or uh, when you are found of eating more sweets okay when you are found of uh, eating more sweets so that time the bacteria which is present in our mouth so what it will do it will convert the sugars Okay, it converts the sugars into acids. It converts the sugars into acids. Okay, acids. that is when the pH of the acid found in the mouth falls below 5. So, when the pH of the acid which is found in the mouth, it falls below the range of 5. You know what is acid strength? Below 7. Okay, below 7, it is the acid strength. Okay. Yeah. So, to decay starts. So when the pH, so when the pH of the acid, okay, if uh, which is there in the mouth, if it, which is found, if it is below uh five, okay, then tooth decaying will start. So the excess of acid has to be removed. So the in their mouth when uh like when the sugars are converted into acid. So what will happen in the mouth? More of acid is formed. So this excess of acid, how it can be removed by cleaning the teeth. Okay, by cleaning the teeth with good quality of toothpaste. Okay, and which is a uh, kind of alkaline in nature, which is kind of alkaline in nature. So that can be treated. So to uh, so tooth decaying can start by converting the sugars into acids. So the acid which is produced in the mouth, it will be having a uh, uh, pH below than five. Then what will happen? The tooth decaying will start. So how to treat this excess of acid? So it can be treated by you uh, removing the uh, by cleaning the your teeth, okay, with a good quality toothpaste which is alkaline in nature. So the toothpaste which you are using it should be alkaline in nature. Next is soil of pH and plant growth. So most of the plants, most of the plants they have healthy growth, okay. When the pH is close to 7. So, when you have the pH of the soil close to 7, then the plants will grow healthily. Okay, you, you get a proper, uh, proper yield. But it should not. Uh, so, the rain should be at proper neutral 7 rate. It should neither be acidic nor be alkaline. So, when the uh, pH soil, okay, when the uh, this what, uh, the, uh, pH of the soil, it is exactly close to 7, then the growth of the plants will be a healthy growth. Okay, so this we have discussed then salts. So what do you mean by salts? So acid, bases and then is salts. Okay, so salts are what? So salts are the ionic compounds. Okay, what do you mean by ionic compounds? When ions, okay, when ions are, uh, what you can say, combined, you can say when uh, uh, ions are combined, Okay, so suppose Na plus and Cl minus. So these are the ions. This is what? This is a cation. This is a anion. Right. So whenever the cations and anions, okay. So uh, that is when most of they are uh, salt. Okay, so these are ionic in compounds. So how they are found? By Neutralization reaction. How they are formed by neutralization reactions? What is neutralization reaction? We have discussed this. What is neutralization reaction? Yeah. So neutralization reaction is like between acid and uh, alkaline. Acid. Acid and alkaline. 
acid and base okay when acid and base reacts it gives you salt and water, water. water. right salt. so this reaction is called as neutralization reaction so but whenever there is a addition of us or that is whenever there is a reaction of acid with base it gives you salt so this is obtained by a neutralization reaction so what are the characteristics of your okay so what is the characteristics of salts so most of the salts are crystalline solid so what do you mean by crystalline solid like uh, they're solid in state they're not like in liquid like yeah so they will be like crystals with uh sugar crystals so like that okay uh there are two terms one is a crystalline another is amorphous okay what do you mean by amorphous do you know what do you mean by amorphous no the talc powder which you use the black powder talc talc powder for the oh, face yeah, yeah, okay no. talc powder how it will be how will be the texture right yeah it will with be like powder. powder for yeah yeah that is called as amorphous okay that is called as amorphous and crystalline means it will be in the form of crystals okay so most of the salts these are crystalline solids so they will be in the form of crystals salts may be transparent or opaque so it can uh, so the salts that is which are crystalline in form they are transparent okay you can see you you know the sugar crystals the salt yeah. bigger salt crystals so it can, it is transparent and most of the salts these are soluble water okay they are soluble in water then uh solutions of the salt they conduct electricity in molten state so when this salts are dissolved in water okay so that is uh, whenever in state they can conduct electricity okay so the salt may be either salty they it may be sour it may be sweet in taste it may be bitter in taste at and it might be in savory taste okay so the salt it can have any of the taste the neutral salts neutral salts they are colorless so like, they like there is some salt called as pink and black salt right what is that kind of salt pink and like pink and black salt huh. pink salt that himalayan pink salt yeah, so, so content of uh, sodium will be less. Okay, in normal, the sodium content will be more. In pink salt, what they uh, so it is a iodized salt. So they are again uh, what they, they have done. That pink salt is like even more healthier than. Ah, healthier like, because they uh because the uh sodium content will be okay. uh for BP patients. So if you yeah. some. For, patients if you eat more of salt so they may have some hypertension problem right so and that time it tastes a bit different like uh, it tastes a bit different so it is like you cannot use it uh, for regular purpose also but uh, like for the some uh, like most of the people uh, for like type conscious and all for them the doctor suggests okay so then the uh, black salt, like some black salt, it is called as amchur powder, I guess. It is uh, it is good for digestion. Oh, okay. Like okay. they tell black salt is not that good because it contains a lot of um, salt. It contains more of salt, but it is good for digestion. Okay, yeah. for they use it for uh, some sodas. They use it uh, for, uh, for some like whatever uh, dishes you may say that uh, what do you call it? A tamarind po a popsicles they make no yeah so for that then any savory items okay for any savory items they put this black salt okay. for your uh, mm, what is that amla what you can amla candy yeah. okay for that uh, for Even such in things pani for in pani puri right ha yeah <laughs> Yes, yeah. so uh, these are used for uh, like that. It is good for uh, like for tasting also it is good as well as for digestion purpose also it is good. So some of the salt, okay, so they taste differently. The salty, some will be sour, some are sweet in taste, some are bitter in taste, some are savory, yeah. okay. Then uh, the neutral salts, they are odorless 
then salt it can be either colorless or it can be color so these are some of the characteristics of your salts so these are some of the examples of the salts okay uh, this is not there for you all. So this is deleted part for you all. So sodium chloride. Okay, sodium chloride, uh, that is a common salt. So which where we use common salt, common salt we use in preparation of food. Okay, yeah. so common salt. So this is one salt. Next is sodium hydroxide. So sodium hydroxide is also called as the electrolysis. How it is produced? It is produced by electrolysis of aqueous solution of sodium chloride uh, means what in a beaker okay in a beaker what is done in a beaker okay NaCl is taken NaCl is added in water okay now to this what is passed electric current is part so when electric current pass is passed to this water what will happen electricity will be conducted right so yeah. this will undergo electrolysis electrolysis means what this NaCl will uh, be split into Na plus and Cl minus. Okay. So like this. So it forms, uh, it is called as the sodium chloride solution. That is NaCl is called as the brine solution. It is called as brine solution. solution. Brine solution. Okay. So this is another example, sodium hydroxide. Next is uh, bleaching powder. So bleaching powder, where it is used, bleaching powder, it is used as a uh, disinfectant in many industries, okay. It is used for bleaching your dirty clothes in laundry, right. Making, so it, yeah. it is used as a disinfectant for, uh, which is used for disinfecting water to make potable water, okay. So these are some of the uses of bleaching powder. So this is also an example of this a salt. Bleaching powder is actually not good for clothes because it's... Uh... Yeah, but previously people were used to use. Now, if you use more of bleaching powder, your clothes will tear. Because, okay, it yeah. gets, yeah. So, uh, next is baking soda. So, baking soda is also one of the salt. So, baking soda, the name is sodium hydrogen carbonate or it is called as sodium bicarbonate. So, where we use this baking soda in our uh, bakery items, right, yeah. to uh, to make a soft and spongy, maybe cake, okay, for your ba bakery items. Then, like, baking... Uh, do you add, like, for doing lemon soda, do you add lemon and baking soda or is it different soda? Lemon soda? Yeah. Like, lemon soda, which... we, no, no, no. For lemon soda, we don't add baking soda. Then what, uh, like, what is, like, then what is the purpose like for lemon soda? What like they put another soda? Uh, soda, um, this carbonated soda from the bottle that is added. Okay, carbonated water is added. Okay. Baking soda is not added. Baking soda it is used uh, in making your uh, cakes. Okay, bakery items to make that fluffy cake. Okay, to make the bread. Okay, so to make it fluffy, more fluffy. So that time you use this baking powder or that is baking soda. Okay. Yeah. Then uh, it is used in uh, baking soda is used for, as an antacid. Okay. To treat the indigestion problem. Then baking soda, it is used for cleansing the ornaments, which is made of silver. So the so silver ornaments can be, uh, it can be cleansed. Okay. By using yeah. baking soda. So these are some of the uses of baking soda. Next is baking powder. Okay, baking powder. Uh, so, baking powder also. Uh, okay. So, it is a mixture of baking soda and mild edible acid. So, carbon dioxide and sodium carbonate. So, carbon dioxide causes this bread. And so, when you treat this baking soda, baking powder, it is also made from baking soda only. Okay. So, this is also another type of that. Next, we'll go for washing soda. So, washing soda, the name is uh, sodium carbonate. Okay. So, it, sodium carbonate, right. So, where it is used? It is used in glass, soap and paper industries. Okay. Then, it is used in manufacture of sodium compounds such as borax. So, see, these are some of the other uses of sodium uh, washing soda. Then, plaster of Paris. Okay. When you get a fracture. Okay, yeah. they put a plaster, right? So, this plaster of Paris, it is made from gypsum. Okay, gypsum. gypsum. Yeah, gypsum. So, uh, this gypsum, it is heated at seven, uh, 3 
73 kelvin so gypsum is what gypsum is calcium sulfate dot 2h2 here you can see down so what is gypsum why is making some chemical formulas uh, why do you actually put dot uh, because it is associated with water molecule oh okay Okay, when it is associated with water molecule, you put a dot. Because even they had put like for magnesium hydroxide, they put a dot, right? No, magnesium hydroxide wasn't a dot. It is like this. Magnesium hydroxide was, just a second, MgOH twice. Okay. Your here, calcium uh, sulfate dot 2H2O. So, this water, it is uh, associated, okay, with this calcium sulfate. So, if this water molecule is lost, then this calcium sulfate, it won't be in crystalline form. Okay, means what? If it is only calcium sulfate, you uh, then yeah. this calcium sulfate, it will be in powder form. Means what? It will be in amorphous form. Okay. Yeah. When it is associated with water molecules, when it is bonded with this water molecules, then you can say that it is in crystalline form. Okay. So, plastic of Paris, it is prepared by heating your gypsum. So, what is gypsum? Calcium sulfate dot 2H2O at 373 Kelvin. Okay. So, when you heat this gypsum, so here is the reaction you can see here. So, gypsum, when you heat it, you get calcium sulfate dot hemihydride. Hemi means half, right? So, it is called as hemi and water, it is called as hydrate. Okay, so hemi hydrate plus one and half water molecule is lost. Okay, like this. So, this is the reaction. Uh, then, where this is used, uh, just a second. So, where it is used, it is used in your uh, hospitals, okay, as plasters for supporting the fractured bones in the right position. Then it is used as fireproofing material. Okay. Then uh, where it is used? So the gypsum, the another name is plaster of Paris. So how it is it is expressed as calcium sulfate dot hemihydrate. Okay. So gypsum, when you heat it at 100 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Celsius or it is 373 Kelvin. Okay. Uh, so whenever you are converting 0 degree to Kelvin, it will be plus 273. You know that, right? Conversion. Yeah. So, when you say it is 0 degree, then you can say it is 273 Kelvin. So, if you say it is 25 degree, then what will be in Kelvin? Um, you are supposed to convert it again. So. How you will convert it? You have to just add it. 273 plus 25. It will be 298 Kelvin. Understood? Yeah. Huh. So, suppose now they are saying 100 degree. 100 degree Celsius means what? 273 plus 100. So, this will be 373 Kelvin. So, like this you have to convert it. Understood? Yeah. So, this is a conversion. So, 0 degree, you write it. 0 degree equals to 273 Kelvin. So, if they say 10 degree Celsius, how will convert it into uh, Kelvin? So, 2 degrees Celsius. No, no, 0. 10 degrees Celsius. If you want, if they say you to convert it into Kelvin. How you will, uh, like, what is the answer? Um, like, to Kelvin, right? Yeah. Huh, to Kelvin. See here, there are three scales, okay? Three temperature scales on which you can calculate the temperature. One is degree Celsius. Hmm. There is degree Fahrenheit and Kelvin. Okay, so Celsius. Celsius. This is Fahrenheit. And this is Kelvin. Okay, then is Kelvin. So, I said you to convert from Celsius to Kelvin. So, it so is... The general equation is 0 degree equals to 273. If I tell you 10 degree Celsius means what? You have to just add 273 plus 10. So, this will be 283 Kelvin. Understood? Okay. Hmm. If I say now 
80 degree Celsius there? Um, zero de sorry, 80 degree to... You have to do 273 70, plus 80. Yeah, yeah plus 80. Okay, uh, like that. Uh, 273 plus 80 is 353. Okay, so like that. Okay, so you have to remember in that way. Yeah. Fine. So just uh, see what else we have left. So this much is there in your textbook. Okay, so these are the things which we had to cover in this particular chapter that is acid bases and salts. Yeah. Hmm. So which chapter do you want me to take next? Uh, I don't know the next chemistry chapter and like the biology. Uh, I'm really not sure still like because uh, like, uh, like they still didn't start any other chapters till now so so you want me to do? I think I'm really not sure. Like so, I think in bio we have that uh, mutant which one? Animals. Biology. Huh? Biology. biology. Yeah. Huh, which one you want? Uh, nutrition in animals. Mm, you have the textbook right now. Can you send me pics? Uh, I will just see because uh, they have still not started any chapter because I'm just really not sure which one will be there. Now, uh, like after this, they have not started with any other chapter? No. Mm, a new, uh, then which all chapter, like uh, biology, they have not started with any chapter? Uh, nutrition in plants and animals? Like uh, nutrition in animals, they just gave us the explanation, but they're still like didn't go through the chapter properly. Okay, okay, you send me that, so we shall de uh, deal with that one. No, or you want any other chemistry chapter to be started? Uh, like for I... this, for this term which you have. For midterm, I don't. I think I'll be having uh, acid bases and salts and. What do you want me to do next then? I think biology, nutrition, and animals. Okay. Can you send me some three, at least a proper first uh, four pages you send me? Yeah. Hmm? You can send me now? Yeah, I'll just uh, bring the mobile. Okay, okay, fine. Like, yeah, shall I send you the whole, like, the whole chapter? Uh, is it with you now? Yeah, the book is with me. Uh -huh, but you need to tell, uh, send me completely, uh, you, you send me the crop once every time. <laughs> uh, yeah. Or else what you can do, uh, send me first four pictures. This topic, when is your uh, school starting? From 30th October. Okay, so we have time, right? Okay. Oh, you send me first four pictures right now. Yeah. Proper four pictures, huh? Hello.
Al centro. Heterotropic yes. okay in digestion. So they have started this chapter for you all? Yeah. Yeah, yeah they have uh, like just explained the first part. Then they gave the exercise of the holiday homework. So. Okay, okay, fine then. Okay, now uh, so what you do? I got it. So it is uh, everything, it covers your animal part, yeah. then okay, uh, some uh, yeah. others, what amoeba and all yeah. humans yeah. in digestion, teeth, incisors, yes, okay. Mm -hmm. Fine, so. Like so what do you want? Uh, we'll start this in the new class or oh, because I need to go I through know. this. So uh, uh? like I don't know. Mm -hmm. so because bio I have to go through. Yes, it is uh, like heterotopic. It is uh, you have to learn your uh, heterotopic nutrition, then how amoeba gets its nutrition, then human body okay gets their nutrition, and the process of digestion. So these are the main, uh, what you can say, main things which uh, you are going to study in this particular chapter. Hmm. Okay, can you tell me what is herbivores? Some basic, we'll just go through some basics. What are herbivores? Uh, like grass plants. Uh, like how you can characterize oh, them? Oh, how... like, yeah, the animal which eats only green items. Like Yes, uh, green items means green... Uh... Like plants. And... <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I thought green kebabs and all. Oh, I don't know. Uh -huh. So, green, uh, okay, so the animals who depend on plants for their food, right? Yeah. Okay, then how do you classify carnivores? Uh, the an the, Those animals who eat uh, meat and other non uh -huh. So, the animals who uh, depend, depend on, on other, other animals, animals, okay, yeah. uh, for their food. Then, omnivores? To depend on plants and animals. Animals, yes. So omnivores are those animals who depend on both plants as well as. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, how do you classify the? Uh, okay. If I give you example of uh, hen. Hen. Hen, yes. Uh, it depends on plants. Yes. Okay. Then goat. Goat is also herbivorous. It is also herbivore. Okay. Yeah. So if I say, uh, what will I give you example as? Deer. Deer. Like ah, deer. Ah. Um, it also like depend upon 
plan. It depends upon plan. Okay, some are dependent on plants and some uh, they it are animals, yeah. animals. Okay, so some they are uh, they call some other like they will be deer, deer only, but uh, the they look same. They, they are classified into some other category. So I don't remember them. Sambra deer or something. Sambra deer. Okay, mm. fine. So uh, this is the classification. Huh? Reindeer. reindeer, no. Reindeer, it is, it is found in cold areas, right? Yeah. Uh, fine. So can you tell me like food chain, you know, food chain? Yeah. Huh. So uh, in the uh, like the whatever the life cycle is going on, so there is a something called as food chain. Means what? Yeah. Everyone is dependent on someone. Now yeah, we are yeah. dependent on plants for yeah. our food. Like we are dependent on plants for food. So plants are dependent on for from some other sources for their food. Like so, like yeah. that. So uh, so plants they need uh what it, they need carbon dioxide for their synthesis of food. So it requires. Uh, sunlight it requires uh sunlight water carbon dioxide okay chlorophyll the green pigments okay so it requires this is all things for preparing their own food so uh, plants it, it it is eaten by you can say uh, uh goat so yes so goat so it is like some other animal is dependent on that so that is nothing but food chain so if this yeah. food chain get disturbed what will happen the whole cycle will change yes whole cycle will say or what you can say now the uh, the uh, what you can say now it is maintained okay now like uh, if you if the number of uh, if you say if the number of uh, what is it tigers okay if it get reduces so what in turn the other species it get it will get more it will get more increased okay now you know that for your cultivation of uh, crops okay so in the soils there will be earthworms right yeah. so these earthworms they are very uh, helpful for the uh, what you can say for uh, giving nutrition or for providing nutrition in the soil okay so yeah. these they fix nutrition earthworms okay so if earthworms are not there what will happen the soil will be disturbed the plant yes soil will be disturbed so if the soil is disturbed because of that the crops won't uh, like the yield won't be good right so if the yield is not good then what the cost of the whatever food uh, maybe the maize maybe the jowar okay maybe all the crop items so they the price will high up right so in turn, so these all adverse factors will react. So everything to maintain in economy. So these all things should be in a proper way. Okay, food chain system. So the uh, so these are keeping everything the uh, what you can say the food cycle in a proper uh, way. Okay, so if 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 something gets higher, okay, if something gets higher, then it will be some adverse effect. Now, if the number of snakes, now if the number of snakes around, uh, you say, near the, like, houses also, there will be snakes, okay. So, if the snake, uh, now, sna if the number of eagles, they get reduced, what will happen? The number of snakes will get increased. Increase. Now, the sna snakes may be everywhere, then they will go and uh, sit in everyone's home. Right. Yeah. So like that. So everything. So the food cycle should be maintained. Okay. So now you know that. So everything. Now for our food, we are dependent on plants. Okay. For our, uh, like for living organism, for uh, to live. So the first necessary thing is air. Okay. That is oxygen to breathe. Next, we need food and we need shelter. Okay, so these are the three main uh, things which we require. Now, for plants to survive. So, they require, uh, like whenever the plants are, uh, they want to survive, they require sunlight, they require water, they require, uh, what you can say, uh, carbon dioxide for their preparation of own food. What about plants? Uh, what about animals then? How do animals, so can animals make their own food? 
uh, do you have a dog at home do you have a pet dog no no okay so if there is a dog at home so do you tell him to prepare his own food no we can't. no so we provide them foods right so animals they cannot make their own food okay like uh, how uh, plants they can prepare their own food but animals they cannot prepare their own food so these animals they are dependent so they are either depending on the plants for their food or they are depending on the animals oh, for their food. okay or both so some plants uh, so some animals who are dependent on the uh, plants for their food they are called as herbivores and some uh, animals who are dependent on animals for their food they are called as carnivores mm -hmm. and some uh, animals who are dependent on both plants as well as animals they are called as okay omnivore so these are the three categorization of the animals you can see uh, on what basic they are dependent then next we are going to discuss about the heterotopic nutrition in animals okay heterotropic nutrition in animals Okay, so heterotopic nutrition and animals means what? Human being is also an animal, right? Human being is also a animal, animal. right? So we, uh, what you can say, so what type of uh, path or what type of steps we follow uh, in having our nutrition, okay? So either uh, we take liquid food or we take solid food, right? So the animals, they generally take solid or they take liquid food that may contain complex nutrients. So whatever the comp we have, now we eat uh, like the, uh, uh, what you can say, we eat rice, okay, we eat uh, roti, we eat different, uh, you can say uh, the buns, burgers, okay, this uh, pizza, noodles, you can say. So these all things we eat. So these things, they need to be degraded, right? So they should, uh, in our body, so they should be, so the, these are very heavy, like they are very heavy for our uh, stomach. So what it will happen, so what will happen, these food items, so when we are having, how we'll have, we'll have completely, we'll put them in our, we'll press it in our mouth, no. We take smaller bites, right? We take smaller bites, we chew it properly. So what is happening? So we are, uh, what we are doing, we, uh, we are breaking down the food. We are breaking down the food from complex substances to simpler, right? So any, you can see the goat also. You can see goats, uh, like you can see the other animals like dogs, cats. How they eat? Do they force in their, uh, uh, like in their mouth? No. They chew the food. Slowly, slowly they chew the food. So the whatever the complex foods are there, so they are uh, made simpler, okay? So complex substances or what you can say complex nutrients okay so complex foods they are broken down into simpler substances that can be easily absorbed by our body so what we do we take in bites we chew it so that our body take it properly okay it should go in a ease form it should not disturb our uh, system it should not disturb our system so we break down the food very uh, smoothly or you can say in a uh, we break it you know into simpler form okay so that it gets absorbed by the body now whatever does not get absorbed the and uh, the unabsorbed food okay it is removed from the body right so how it is removed in the form of waste so it is uh, the unabsorbed food so whatever is required by our body it is taken so whatever the nutrients are take uh, nutrients are broken down so whatever the complex food which we are taking so it is broken down into simpler food so from that food the important nutrients they are taken up and whatever the waste which is undigested so that is thrown out as a waste okay now this mode of nutrition in which food is taken into the body 
and then broken down into simpler absorbable substances. So whatever the food we are taking and which is breaking down into simpler substances and then whatever has been to be absorbed, it is absorbing and whatever is a waste, it is uh, what we do, uh, it is thrown as a waste. So this is called as holozoic nutrition. What it is called as holozoic nutrition. So many animals, including human beings, show holozoic nutrition. So holozoic nutrition, so this is a mode of nutrition which is taken by the animals as well as some uh, human beings also, you know. So the food which we eat, we chew it, okay, we make it simpler. Okay, it is taken by our body. So whatever the nutrients are to be taken by our body, so it is supplied to our system. Then whatever the unabsorbed thing is there, so that will be thrown as a waste. Okay, so this process is called as holozoic nutrition. So the process of holozoic nutrition, so they are involving five steps. So in holozoic uh, nutrition, it involves five steps. So the first step is ingestion. Ingestion, I-N-G-E-S-T. -E Ingestion. So the process by which uh, the process by which we take the food, it is called as ingestion. So we are eating the food. So it is okay. So this uh, what you can say, the process by which we take it is called as ingestion. So different animals take it or ingest food differently. So human beings they use hand. They use their fingers. They use their hand for having their food. So this is injection. Okay, we are injection. We are doing ingestion. So we are doing a process of having the food. Now cats, how do they eat? They put directly their uh, by tongue. Okay, by tongue they eat their food. So the process of ingestion is different in different animals. Okay, uh, so dog. Who's, okay, so they also have by their tongue. So the process of ingestion is different in different animals so first is ingestion so the food the process by which we take the food uh, into our body so this okay it's, it is called as what it is called as ingestion so this is a first step then second step is what digestion okay second step is digestion, digestion. so the process by which complex components of food are broken down into simpler substances that can be easily absorbed by the body. So the process, so digestion is done by our digestive tract. Okay. First is our mouth. Okay. In the mouth, our teeth. Okay. What they do? We chew it. Okay. We chew it. So while chewing, so there is a enzyme called as saliva. So which helps in uh, digestion, which helps in chewing your food. Right. So, uh, so the food which is complex, okay, it is broken down into simpler. Then it is passed to what? It is passed to the food pipe or it is called as esophagus. Okay, okay. it is called as esophagus. So, from your food, uh, so the food particles, they are passed to the food pipe or it is called as esophagus. Then it is what it is done. It is passed to the stomach. Okay, in the stomach, there is another enzyme that is gastric enzyme so there is one more enzyme okay i'll just find it out i forgot so so another en uh, enzyme which helps in uh, further uh, breaking down your food okay complex food then it is passed through your small uh, intestine large intestine and then whatever the nutrients are taken the so waste it is passed to the small intestine large intestine and last to your anus okay so it is ejected so it is Oh, so it is ingestion, uh, sorry, ejection. It is called as ejection. So digestion, it is a process by which your food, complex food components, it is break, broken down into simpler substances. Okay. Next is absorption. So next process, next step uh, in your halozyc nutrition is absorption. So the process by which soluble substances obtained by the digestion of food are absorbed into the blood for transportation. So I, as I said, so whatever is required, so after digestion, after the food is processed and it is broken down to simpler, so as it is passing, 
so whatever the nutritions are uh, we get it from the food okay so that uh, nutrition it is absorbed into the blood okay it is supplied to our blood or it is transported uh, to the blood vessels okay so uh, so this uh, further this is uh, your what is done it is pumped to the heart and then heart will circulate the whole uh, blood to your body okay each cell each nerve so it uh, it gets the so this process is called as absorption so whatever the soluble substances whatever is been obtained from the soluble substances it is passed or it is absorbed into the blood for transportation to the different cells so this process is called as absorption next is a simulation okay what is a simulation the process by which absorbed simple substances are utilized by the body to produce energy now suppose you don't eat food for two days how will be your energy levels very low if you don't eat, very low right yeah. so you won't feel like getting up now if i give you one glass of uh, what you can say i give you a one glass of uh, some uh, fru fruit juice or you may take some shake okay some chocolate shake or some strawberry shake so how will you how will be your energy level you'll be energetic yeah. if you if i give you a glass of if i give you a glass of uh, chocolate shake and i and i tell you go put a round and come so you'll go and come yeah. yes so your energy levels will be high so whatever the food it, it uh, has been absorbed okay which is absorbed so it it is utilized by our body so this utilization of body so when we utilize it so we get energy okay so this energy okay so it produces energy and to make complex substances required by the body it is called as assimilation so this process okay it, it is called as assimilation next is ingestion ingestion okay what is ingestion that is uh, to remove the yeah, undigested yeah. food okay or the waste matter from the body it is called as ejection yeah. so this the process of nutrition in multicellular organism is different from that of unicellular organism okay so multicellular organisms are what multicellular organisms such as hydra they have a simple digestive system while lions dogs cows and humans they have a well developed digestive system so we have a well developed digestive system consisting of different organs now, all right so uh, next time i want the complete uh, digestive uh, system okay uh, the process of digestion in unicellular organism unicellular mean what they have only single cell multicellular means they are made up of many cells okay so in unicellular organism like amoeba they ha they are very simple and these organism do not have a digestive system so in the next class we are going to study how is the ingestion of food in different organism okay so today uh, we have seen heterotopic nutrition in uh, animals so you just go through what is holozoic nutrition and what are the steps involved okay and what is the uh, uh, different steps so just go through that so next class we are going to see about uh, uh, different uh, ingestion of food in different animals okay so the remaining uh, uh, remaining pages you can send me uh, now okay after this class because later again uh, so after this for like you have uh, finished uh, you have sent me till nutrition in humans hum uh, humans okay so after that you can send me remaining parts okay yeah. is it clear yes okay fine then so we will end your so we'll meet in the next class okay yeah. so i'll continue with this in the next class yes sir. thank you okay chalo bye bye yeah.